Hey, I've got some great advice for you if you want to sell more music and merchandise at your live shows. In fact, any type of live event that you sell something, a physical product, this is going to help you no matter what that is, music or not. So I was going through my podcast archives recently and I came across this one segment from a podcast that I used to do with my friend Billy Gryzak called Music Marketing Monday. There's a little segment there, it was just golden, the advice that Billy gave and we both chimed in on it. I think you really benefit from the advice that we give here if you want to sell more stuff at live events. So I've only got the audio of this, so I'm going to switch over to that with just some nice images to look at while you listen, and then I'll come back at the end with some closing thoughts. At any stage of your career, if you have more than, if you have three or more pieces of music and merchandise available for sale, we've, I think you and I both have been using the term bundle for many, for many years, but you should be, be bundling. There should be a price, a slightly higher price for the individual items, but if they get the whole package, whatever that package consists of, there's, there's a special discount and incentive for them to spend a little bit more and take home more of your stuff with them, but you can do that at any level of your career. Well, I say the magic number. There, 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 there is, there is kind of in my world after like 40 years of doing this the magic number is a $20 bill and here's here's what I always recommend always price your stuff at around between 12 and 15 dollars whether it's a cd a hat uh, a t-shirt keep them all around the same price i'd say everything on the table is 15 dollars if you can afford it right mm -hmm. and then what you do is which is really brilliant you say everything on the table is 50 bucks or two for 20 oh yeah you just said 50 yeah, I, I did that very same thing when i released a a new CD several years ago, but I had this, like, as, as a lot of artists do, I had this box of CDs from a previous band. It was even a different genre. Um, and I said, well, how can I leverage this? So I put them both out and I said $15 each, but I was mainly promoting the new one, you know, but I said, or you can get both, get them both for, for 20 bucks or just a five, you know, an extra five bucks. Um, and so, yeah, you, and most people threw that through the 20 down and, and took both of them. Right. So so you just make it sound, seem ridiculously no-brainer. Oh, I got to take take advantage of the value. Yeah, see, the thing is $5 bills, $10 bills, and $20 bills. Those are the most easy uh, uh, configurations that people can part with. You don't have to make change, blah, blah, blah. I, I think selling your music for 5 bucks is too cheap. I know a lot of people do it, and that's yeah, fine. I, I no, agree, no unless problem. it's like a four-song EP or something. Right, like, yeah. you know, so, uh, and, 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 and here the thing is, I feel that $10 is what I really want for a CD, but <laughs> I, I price it at 15 because uh, I can. And I really want them to buy two, and not just because I'm greedy, but I want them to, to have my music because I feel it's going to add value to their life. And if by telling, see, I really want 10, so if I sell two for 20, I'm getting the $10 each I want. But psych psychologically, if I just said it's $10 each, I'm only going to get a $10 bill because people will part with one piece of green. It's a psychological thing, whether it's a five, a 10, or a 20 or a one, but you know, who wants to sell things for a dollar? So, so, you know, when you start getting the sixes, the twelves, you know, the 14s, the 1450s, that's when people have, get confused and they're, they're more reticent to spend their money. But if they can just reach their pocket and pull out a denomination in one of those increments, then that's the way to go. So I'd say, get it in your head that you want $10, but you're pricing it at 15, like as a retail price and your wholesale is 10. And if people buy two, you're not losing any money and they're gaining by getting two of your items and they feel great because they just saved uh, a bunch of money they just saved ten dollars see what i'm saying so folks here we are a half hour into this episode that right there was your million dollar tip right there baby that was that was brilliant man yeah i couldn't have said it better myself if more <laughs> artists did that they'd make more money and, and get more of their music into the ears of their fans well actually i'm sure you're going to see in the next book bob baker's going to talk about the uh what's it called the incredible money making system how to use one dollar, five dollar, ten dollar, twenty dollar increments to I'm make gonna, your fortune in the music business. I'm going to call it the magnetic, no, the miraculous five, ten, twenty formula. <laughs> Here we go. So remember, when you sell physical products at live events, price them in increments of five, ten, twenty, and if you have a lot of stuff that you can bundle, even forty, fifty, and beyond. Of course, this is primarily geared for people that have cash, they're carrying cash with them. Of course, you should also be able to take credit card payments or digital currencies, um, use PayPal, use Square, Venmo, because if people don't have cash on them, you want to be able to collect those funds via credit card or other means. 
But the bottom line is to think strategically about how to price stuff. Don't assume that everyone has just got pocket change and they don't have money and nobody buys music anymore, blah, blah, blah. Price your individual items a little bit higher so that when you combine them and bundle them, it's ridiculously attractive. So just throw down that $20 bill and uh, they'll go home with your stuff. They'll be better off because they've got the awesome gifts that you offer the world. You'll be better off because you'll be able to fuel more of your creativity financially. It's a beautiful arrangement. So what do you think? If there's a way to leave a comment here, let me know what you've done to price your stuff at live events. What's worked for you? What hasn't? Any insights or examples that you want to share? I would love to see them. Just comment below or wherever you can on the page here. And if you want to stay connected, subscribe to my YouTube channel or like this page or subscribe to the audio podcast. There's probably a lot of different things that you can do. I'll have links to those most likely in the comments below. And I like moving my hands around like this just to indicate where you may or may not be able to find things. It's kind of fun to do that on camera. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. I'm Bob Baker saying so long for now. Because if people don't have cash on them, sure, you want to be able to collect that. So I was recently going through my podcast archives. I think that you'll... I think you'll... Re hey, in this video, I've got some great advice for you on how to sell more music. <clears throat> this will make the blooper real.